picture recording. I know I can't get them to extend, but I really, yeah. There's nothing I can do yet because I'm actually supposed to give you a break and then record. <laughs> okay, anyway, so today's lecture recording. Shh. How's the voice on it? Is it okay? All right. So you can hear me. It's not muffled and okay, it's great. All right, so we continue with gas reduction. Shh. Come, guys. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. L we're doing gas reduction, and um, if you've looked at your notes, did you look in your notes? No. Oh. Okay, if you looked in your notes, the way I'm teaching you, I like to think of it as a more efficient way. But other lecturers have a different way, and I'm part of another group of lecturers who don't make my, my first row, first column a one, and work with fractions. I hate working with fractions. So it's up to you, whichever way you choose, the one in the book is just another way, all right? The one I like is so there's no fractions makes me happy, because I can multiply in my head. You can't multiply, but you still, no calculators, guys. <laughs> so multiplication times table, guys, up to at least 10, right? Know it in your head. Um, so, shh. so it's OK if you have a different method to mine, but don't make pages and pages of working. You want to do it in four or five. Sometimes you can do it in three, right? Four or five iterations and you're done, okay? So the next example, one. The next example we're going to do, we'll do it together, of a unique solution to a system of linear equations. So yeah, I'm already telling you that my system of linear equations is going to have a unique solution. You will not know that, obviously, in tests, but this is just an example. So we've got this system of linear equations, x plus y plus z equal to 3 minus x minus y plus 2z equal to 0, and 2x plus 4y minus z equal to 7. One minus one, two, one minus one, four, one, two, and minus one, three zeros. Can you solve the six system of linear equations using gas reduction? So you can, if you want to try it yourselves, you know the method. I'm going to do it on the board slowly. No talking, please. And you can see what I've done, OK? So I like my line down here and across like that. Right, I put in my coefficients or my entries, 1, 1, 1, 3, minus 1, minus 1, 2, and 0, 2, 4, minus 1, and 7. It's my coefficients. And then I see I can make this one 0 and this one 0. So I'm looking at row 2, row 2 plus row 1, all right? That plus that is 0. That plus that is 0. That plus that is 3 and 3. Right? It's OK if you get a 0 there. We're going to swap the rows later. All right? We can swap rows. OK? And I want to get rid of this one. So I'm going to say this one minus two of those. So I'm going to say R 
3 minus 2R1. All right? And I've got a 0 there. That minus 2 of those is 2. That minus 2 of those is minus 3. That minus 2 of those is 1. Is that correct? And I bring down this one. If I add these two rows again, I'm going to get this one. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave this one alone. OK? Maybe my, I'm going to solve it in four, four iterations, not three like before. OK, so now I really got a 0 there. So I'm going to swap these two rows. Watching? I'm swapping these two rows. So I put my 0, 0, 3 and 3 here. Yeah? How about I swap and divide by 3? Right? Or maybe I'll do the division right at the end. OK, let's just leave it like that. 0, 2, minus 3, and 1. And the first row, I can do something to it. What can I do? I'm just hoping those are not fast. Um, all right, so what can I do with R1 now? I can say that. Two of those minus that. Yes? Two of those minus that will give me a zero there. Yes? So two of that, OK, let me write it out. Two of row one minus row three. Remember, you only apply it to, you can only use the operations of the previous one. OK? So two of that minus that is two. Two of that minus that is zero. Two of that. Minus that, that becomes a plus 2, so that becomes 5. 2 of that minus that 6 minus 5 minus 1 is 5. All right? So we've got now a nice triangle of zeros here. The next one, I already got my zero here. I need to make these two zeros. Yes? Are you guys okay? OK, let's stop there and ask questions. Oh, I, you see, in the yesterday's one, I already made that one a 0. Now, if I want to make that to zero, I must add, I could do row one and row two, but then I've done it already. Or I could do row one and row three, but I've done it already. So there's no way I can do it. So it's okay. Sometimes you can use another combination, but I've already used row one in these two. All right? And so I want to leave that as is. In the one yesterday, look at the combinations. I did row one and row two, row two and row three, and row three and row one. So all different combinations. So in this one, I, I don't want to use the same thing. I could say two of those, my, but then I'd, no, I'd say four of those. Yeah, I'd probably get an iteration. You can leave a row as is. That's the, the thing of it. You don't have to do an operation all three times. Right? Question? And going to simultaneous. Mm -hmm. Wasting time. It's just one more operation and you're done. OK? One more operation and you're done. Smarts was. Delay day. <laughs> Had to take a play. <laughs> no, I'm joking, eh? You know I can only joke with you, hey. All right. It's not a joke. <laughs> what? Why is 
not a joke. Don't make me stress now. Shh. Okay, so the next one, shh. I want to make that a, a zero. How do I make that a zero? Look which ones I must use. Shh. I must, I must. I want to keep that zero there. I must only use this one and that one. I want to keep that zero there. So that's why I must only have one that has a zero in that position, in the second row, a uh, second column, right? If I added this row, then this would change. So I'm gonna keep that zero there. So I'm going to say three of those minus five of those. Three row one minus five row three. If you are comfortable working in fractions, go ahead. Use those fractions. But I find students tend to make more errors with fractions. And so that's why we don't, we don't, I mean, you get sometimes fractions, but right at the end. Okay, um, where are we? Three of those minus five of those. That becomes six, that's zero. Three of those minus five of those, zero, lovely. Three of those, oh, that's also a zero, five, zero. So there you can immediately see x is equal to zero, right? Shh. Then we have to make this one a zero. So I'm gonna use row two and row three. I'm going to add them. Row two plus row three. And so we get zero, two, zero, four. And the last one I'm just going to leave as is. Or maybe let's just divide it. Okay, now we're already there. You could skip a beat. Watch what I do. Oh, okay. I'm going to say, I'm gonna divide this by two and divide this by six. And so I get one, one, two. And so look how many I've done. One, two, three, four. Only four, and I'm done. All right? Don't go, you want to be efficient. Shh. But careful, careful and efficient. Question? Guys, guys, you want, the aim of Gauss reduction is to get that diagonal of ones and the triangles of zeros. That's your aim, okay? So immediately here, uh, I can say x, y, z is equal to zero, two, one. X is equal to zero, y is equal to two, and z is equal to one. That's a point, one point common to all three. Question. <laughs> So you want to go back to simultaneous? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, but I like to see this. This just makes life easier. So here we have a unique solution. Um, this we could say is three planes intersecting, if they were planes, at a point. Or that's geometrically, or you have one solution. It's a unique solution. Question? No, this remained x. 
this remain y and this remains it. If you do happen to do columns, which I don't suggest you do, swapping columns, remember to take the y with, the name y with. Okay, sorry, my phone is making noise. Maybe it's coming now. The messages. Nope, nope, messages. All right. We carry on with the lecture. Yes? Shh. There's a question. Is it fine we got a different answer? Using the initial equations. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. So you got shh, all ones. So we have here yeah, six minus one is five. It doesn't meet the last one. Okay? So everyone should get this point, okay? Now, another thing I want to say is that um, when you're doing Gauss reduction, you need to double check. It's very easy to make a mistake. So need to double check and then move on. Now, when we do inverses on Monday, there's a way we can check, right? Question? So if you get your diagonal and there's still values here, you must still Gauss reduce until you get the zeros. So it doesn't matter if you get values here. It's at the end that you divide. That's the way I like to instruct students. Because if you keep your diagonal and have values there, you're not yet done Gauss reducing. Uh huh. No, it's important to get the zeros. It's more important to get the zeros than the diagonal. Okay? So your aim is to get the zeros first and then make the diagonal one. Your aim. Okay? Question? <laughs> Sorry? Yes, you need to show those operations, 100%. Because that's the only way you're going to check for yourself. What did I do? Did I do it correctly? Okay? Yeah. When you get a row of zeros. Yesterday, we, we'll do another example. Then it's a unique solution or no solution? There's only three possibilities. A unique solution, infinitely many, or no solution? You've made a mistake. It's still incorrect because you can't say it's one point. You have to say it's the line. So you can do by inspection, you can get one point. Shh. Okay, let's continue. I'll come to your question just now. Okay, we'll come to your question. Okay, so let's do something else now. Um, can you do a simple one? Uh, example three. Example of no solution. So remember, yesterday I said the only options you can have, there's three options you can have. A unique solution, like that one. Infinitely many, like yesterday's, where we got a row of zeros, and that indicated we had to make z equal to lambda, and we solved that way. All right, and we got 
a line geometrically. That means there are infinitely many solutions because a line is made up of infinitely many points. Now, example of no solution where those, even two lines, they don't intersect, or, or planes that, that don't intersect at a common point, right? If we've got three equations and they don't intersect at a common point. Um, so this one, Um, it's, it's simply 3x plus y minus 4 equal to 0, 12x plus 4y minus 2 equal to 0, right? In 2D, these are lines, right? It's not, there's no zeds. So we say it is 3, if we had to put it into a augmented matrix, I'm going to show you a different format of writing now. It's 3, 1, 4, 12, 4, and 2. Can you see these two look like a multiple of each other, right? But not this one. It's not the same multiple. So when I say row 2, if I make that a zero first, row two minus um, four row one. Yes? I get a zero there. Whoa. I get a zero there. But I get a value here. Row two minus four of that, that becomes two minus 16 is minus 14. Okay, what does this mean? That means 0x plus 0y is equal to negative 14. Immediately, there is no solution. You don't even have to fill in this. Right? Immediately, you're telling you that there's no solution. Right? Because these are parallel lines. Can you see it? Yeah? Okay? All right. So write there for yourself, which means 0x plus 0y equal to negative 14. Impossible. Therefore, and then you can write no solution. Okay, so, yes. Sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, say it again loudly. <laughs> I'm, I'm deaf, I'm getting deaf, I'm getting old. Um, I think that our first should be like, if you start with a particular, you can know that the solution should be like, stop there, like. No, I'm saying our aim is to get the diagonal of ones and these two zero. So I make this zero first. Yes? How do I make this zero? By saying this <coughs> minus four of that. Yes? But by doing so, I end up with two zeros and a constant. So I don't get my diagonal of ones. I can't get my diagonal of ones, no matter what I do. All right? So that means once I get this result, it means no solution. This is a result. So when you Gauss reducing, your aim, remember I said your aim is to get this diagonal of ones and the zeros on either side. So here we started, I started, this is my technique. I start, I made this a zero, then this. So if I put a, a A here and a B here, then I made, what did I do? Then I swapped, well, in this case we could swap and so in the end I got a zero here and a zero there. Then I did 
So that I'll make that C and D, and that E and if. So that's the sequence A, B, C, D, E, if. Is that an E? Yeah, that's an E. That's the sequence I want to make of zeros. Okay, once I do that, my, my diagonal falls into place, and my zeros fall, fall into place. It's up to you. Have I not answered your question, Mandelva? No. Maybe say it one more time. Okay, you'll come to me. Okay. Let me say unit test now, and then there are lots of marks in this question. And then you only did like two more steps. Can you say that like you made a mistake? Shh. So every Gauss reduction, shh, every Gauss reduction is only worth two marks. So whether you do this one or this one, it's worth two marks. That's a maximum I will give you. Shh. Two marks, very important marks. Marks are important. Shh. Okay, guys. Shh. If you live by marks alone, it's not good. You need to live by understanding. All right, um, I want to show you another example where you are solving a system with unknowns. Um, okay, so another example. So this is one way to ask a question where they give you the actual, they give you the actual um, system. What happens? If now, shh, guys, guys, guys. Ah. This one is a common type of question where you have to find values of k such, it, such that it meets something, meets the criteria. Okay? Find all values of k for which the system has, so this is going to have part questions. Question part one, a unique solution. So what values of k satisfy so that the system has a unique solution. Um, infinitely many, infinitely many solutions. And the last option is no solution, right? Those are the only options you have. So the system is given, it's um, one, uh, Uh, I'll just write it out, 1K. So you're given, the, they actually give you the first matrix, the first augmented matrix, and that's K, that's K cubed, and that's two, and that's zero. So that's saying like X plus KY is equal to two, KX plus K cubed Y is equal to zero. All right, so they give that to you, and you have to now find values of k that will fit those criteria, all right? So now when we Gauss reduce, remember we, we want to first aim and then say what it means, what if k is equal to something then. So we want to Gauss reduce first. So the first point I'm going to make, this is zero, okay? So how do I make that a zero? Shh, guys, come on. Anybody? Uh, K R 
minus R2. Excellent. K times R1 minus this. There we get a zero. K times this becomes K squared minus this. K squared minus K cubed. You write it out like that. K? K times that minus that is just 2K. Okay? Are you happy so far? And this I can leave as, as is. So the next step is to make, okay, hang on, hang on. If I look at this line, I can deduce something. Let's look at this line. If I make K, if K is equal to zero, what do I get? I get a row of zeros, isn't it? I get the row of